Hey there guys, how you doing? Gonna look in this video at the best hanging height for your grow light. That is trading off the, uh, dropping the light as low as you can over the plants to get as much light onto the canopy against having hot spots in the center and causing some damage to the tips of your plants. And um, yeah, I'm gonna give you a guide as to how to navigate through that for your particular grow light. I've got four examples here to look at a little Viper Spectra in a 2x2, our own Array Pro, uh, Array 4 Pro in a 2x4, Spider Farmer SE7000 in a 4x4, and the HLG um, Diablo 600, sorry, 600 or spec in a 5x5. I'm just going to run through the um, par charts, that is the maps of the power readings over their target grow area at different hanging heights and um, show you where that trade-off occurs and um, how to assess that trade-off for your own particular setup as best as you possibly can. Fortunately, there are lots of websites like mine, um, that's migrelight.com or the reference I'm gonna to use today, which is LED Gardener as an outstanding website, very intricate and detailed par tests of various grow lights and um, really good YouTube channel. So big shout out to LED Gardener and uh, I'm going to use um, his material with his permission. Links below to his website and um, YouTube channel. Please subscribe, outstanding info if you're, uh, if you're interested in grow lighting. So yeah, so he's done multiple tests uh, or tests of lights at multiple hanging heights at full power over their target test area. And we're gonna run through a few of those and I'm gonna give you sort of a, uh, an insight, I hope, into how to achieve, as I said, that, um, that balance between um, as low as possible without damaging your plants and getting good uniformity out to the corners, all that stuff. So in general, what I've been guiding people over the last four or five years on the YouTube channel and in the tests is to um, hit a maximum power reading of around 1,000 micromoles at the hottest point in the dead center. Just to give you perspective, your most grow lights will be specified now to give an average of about 700 to 900 micromoles. So you're trying to get that center measurement where you're not going too far above, as I said, 1,000 micromoles. And that is because that level of light intensity can cause uh, a bit of plant stress um, when the lights are on, you know, all day, every day. And too much light intensity can cause them to, as I said, get stressed. You see the, the leaf curling, uh, slight bleaching on the tips, that type of thing. And uh, yeah, so we're trying to avoid that. At the same time, sometimes it's good to see a little bit because it kind of gives you that indication that you're just on the limit. And this is for LED grow lights. HID, they emit a lot of far red, um, which is, well, infrared, which is heat. Um, and because they radiate a lot of heat, they have to be actually positioned further away from the plants than LEDs. So they are not included in this test. However, let's get into it. So as I said, uh, if we're trying to drop down to the minimum hanging height to get, um, to get as much light as possible. And also I'm going to look at what manufacturers recommend in these circumstances and whether they're accurate or not. The first one is the Viper Spectra XS1500. It's one of these sort of quantum board style lights, uh, panel boards. And um, they recommend 12 to 18 inches hanging height over the, uh, the grow area. Now looking at LED Gardener's tests, he runs them all the way from six inches and way up past 24 inches in terms of hang height. But uh, at 12 inches, he's showing a center measurement of, so the highest reading of uh, 1,150 micromoles. And at that, it's an efficiency of 2.02 micromoles per watt. So that's the total amount of power reaching the plant canopy divided by power consumed, so that's 2.02, which is good. And a uniformity of pretty much 
that uniformity is the lowest reading over the highest reading. So you, you know, ultimately you want it to be 100%, that all the readings are exactly the same, but it's not really achievable. But, uh, anyway, that's the benchmark for this light is, is 50%. However, at, um, at 18 inches, so they recommend, as I said, a range of 12 to 18 inches. At 18 inches, the efficiency drops to 1.76, so there's 13% drop. Efficiency goes up to plus, or sorry, uniformity goes up to 60, to 79%, which is good, um, which is a 60% improvement. So Viper's recommendations, I would agree with. So basically 12 inches to get the most light down, but it'll be, you know, not as uniform as it might otherwise be. Eight inches, 18 inches to get a really uniform light distribution, albeit a little bit less light. So that's good. Well done to Viper Spectra. They're definitely improving the, um, the part charts from all manufacturers have got much better. They're all showing the grid type, showing at different hanging heights. And um, as far as I've tested, they all seem to be uh, pretty accurate, certainly compared to, to the tests I've done. The next light is, the, is our own, or my own Array 4 Pro. It's a 250 watt light, 260 watt light for a two by four. And we recommend a minimum hanging height of eight inches. And you can see on the chart there, at eight inches, it's um, 2.5 efficiency, maximum 1,082, so a little bit above, um, and a uniformity of 60%. So the lowest reading there is 650. So um, right on the limit there in terms of, um, you know, as I said, that, that hot point in the center. Increase it to 14 inches, so one and a half times the hanging height, uh, a little bit more um, than that. And the efficiency is 2.28, so it reduces by 9%, but the uniformity jumps up to 82%, which is uh, one third better. So you're getting a really uniform distribution there across the plank canopy by um, well, nearly doubling the hanging height and you only get a 9% reduction in efficiency. So you see there, that spread out LED bar type fixture, the um, raising it up quite a considerable amount doesn't have a huge impact on efficiency but improves uniformity very dramatically. Plus you get a better, more uniform distribution with the LED bar type than the quantum board type light. Next one is the Spider Farmer SE7000 and they recommend 8 inches to 12 inches, 8 inches they say with CO2. So generally it's recommended if you're going over a thousand micromoles average that you would um, supplement with CO2 um, in a closed system and bring that CO2 and PPM in parts per million up to around the same as the micromoles. So if it was 1500 micromoles you'd have 1500 ppm co2 so in this case their uh, se 7000 in a 4 by 4 at 8 inches uh, maximum center uh, maximum measurement maximum power reading of 1430 micromoles efficiency of 2.5 uniformity of 57 percent so uniformity is a bit low center reading is a little bit high but as i said this is with co2 at 12 inches the center or the highest reading drops to 1200 uh, system efficiency drops a little bit, was 4% down to 2.41, uh, and the uniformity is 72%. I would probably recommend in this instance 16 inches, um, 45 centimeters. Um, that gives a 2.31 efficiency, so a very slight drop, but you get that 82% uniformity across the grow area. And that would be my own recommendation in that case. But in this case, you know, Spider Farmer, they're pushing it. They want to really maximize that efficiency and the potential yield. So they're recommending sort of aggressive hanging heights. But uh, yeah, so yeah, and, and again, bar light showing really good uniformity across the grow area, so impressive there. Next one is the um, HLG 600 or spec. Um, so a quantum board style light uh, is spread out, so the boards are spread out, um, but um, as you'll see here, uh, a little bit of an issue with uniformity. So they recommend uh, 28 inch hanging height. 
and in that instance that's pretty perfect uh, so your maximum of 927 micromoles in at the highest reading um, efficiency of 2.21 um, however unfortunately in this case the uniformity is pretty low 37 percent so you're getting a, a big drop off there between the highest and the lowest and um, you know you can adjust a little bit higher you see there 32 inches drops away about five percent in terms of efficiency down to 2.13 but you get 48 percent um, uniformity however the uniformity levels are lower with that type of light as I said, just because it doesn't physically spread the light out as much. So it's interesting to see that the range of, um, you know, you're talking about increasing hanging height by about 50% over the minimum. You're going to get an increase in uniformity but of, of about 30 to 50%, but you're going to get a reduction in efficiency by, you know, anywhere 10 to 20 percent that sort of range so it is that trade-off really good to see however that the recommended hanging heights by manufacturers are now um, accurate and realistic um, they're coming with the par charts to suit and um, you know that's really really helpful for growers to set up but as i said just to if you're if you're only seeing one par chart and that's the minimum and you want to reduce, as I said, the potential for hotspots and increase uniformity. Go for about a 40-50% increase in hanging height. So go from maybe 10 inches to 15 inches. You'll see a drop in efficiency of 10 to 15%, but you'll get that really good uniformity. And, and anywhere in there is your sort of range where you can dial it in and out and um, you know, try to achieve what you want to achieve with it. You can use uh, quantum sensors for this um, if you don't have good par data from your man from your supplier from your manufacturer we sell them here these are the spot-on quantum sensors uh, best one I found for in terms of value for money it's as accurate as more expensive ones like Apogee um, it's nearly half the price of the Apogee all, all told when everything's added up but uh, just as accurate um, so I recommend using one of those if you can afford it, but they're quite expensive. Um, if you can't afford one of these, you don't want to fork out for one, go to the manufacturer, look at their data sheets, or else there's um, hacks that I've done, particularly if you're an Apple user, uh, for the Photone app to, uh, to measure power. And um, there's links down below to the blog posts and the videos on how to do that. You'll get readings within about 10% using those apps um, with the hacks that I've given you. They should work quite well and help you do that setup. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing your response. Any questions or comments, please leave them below and take care.